ini saya pernah pukul sendiri. Uh, my name is Mila Yashma. I am an artist born in the Netherlands. And after I graduated in the Netherlands, I moved to Indonesia to study visual arts in Jakarta and Yogyakarta. And I live in Indonesia ever since. Uh, what is important for me living in Indonesia is that the role of the artist uh, has a very clear function. So the contemporary art is sort of a direct reflection of the daily life and the political and social circumstances. And the idea that you can be part of a change and there's a direct communication with the public. Yeah, I really try to look for a way or a sort of medium to, to bridge the contact with the public. And then I came up with the idea of creating costumes. Because for me, it's very important that the public or the person standing in front of the work uh, feels really related or is curious to know what, what is he standing in front. And when I put another person in front of the, 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 the viewer, something happens. So to create costumes, it really opens questions. Um, and also, yeah, costumes very much related to, say, power structures, to the history, to yeah, tradition. So I play a lot with different materials because these materials also have all kinds of connotations and they bring all kinds of meanings. So those meanings are part of the concept of the work. Often with the costumes, especially in the beginning when I made the first costumes, the material was very important. So the first costumes I created with animal skins and for example the first one was with uh, frog skins. And in that time I chose frog because um, the frog, the frog meat is like a Chinese food and it was eaten by the Chinese minority in Indonesia. So also I did a performance on the street frying frog legs and it was eaten by the public and then discuss about the situation of the minority of Chinese living in Indonesia after the riots we had in 98. And they are always sort of the black sheep in the society and it still relates also to the colonial past. Um, so that's also why I feel like me as a, a Dutch-born artist living in Indonesia, I have to, to open questions and to examine again um, this kind of different structures in the society and the problems we still have to deal with until now. Since 98, my work became more political in the sense that often my work is a sort of commentary on the current situation, political and social situation in Indonesia, but nowadays also more on a global scale. Um, and in that sense, I also think about where is the tradition, where is the importance of traditions, skills, and the decline of these things. And then also, how can we learn from that in our current situation? So, for example, my latest work in the Jokia Biennale a few months ago, I worked together with an artist from Papua um, to examine bark cloth and also what was bark cloth during the, during the time. So what happened with bark cloth and the clothing in Papua. So for example, the missionaries sort of forced the Papuans to, um, to change their clothing habit and uh, the loin cloth from bark, made out of bark cloth, they had to uh, exchange with uh, textile clothing. Um, and then the bark cloth became sort of a layer for painting. So we work together and try to bring back the clothing idea with the bar cloth. So uh, the artist from Papua, Pa Agus Onga, he sent me his bar cloth paintings and I turned them again in clothing. Uh, I researched on the bar cloth in the different areas in Indonesia. And bar cloth is very important in the sense that people not know a lot about it in Indonesia because it's always about the batik and the, the ikat the Ica textile, but actually the bar cloth is the first material that people were wearing in Indonesia. And there is evidence that at least 40,000 years ago uh, already this was produced. So there are about like 18 types of tree to, can be used for this bar to create into a bar cloth. So I found a group of women uh, in Sulawesi who still produce those bar cloth. Some of them really used it as a revolt against the, the Dutch colonizers as well. Uh, especially the missionary who wanted to change their clothing habits. So I collect all these kinds of stories and then create videos, photographies and costumes and performances with those kinds of issues that I collect. Yeah, it's a different production of knowledge and also 
I often see it as a sort of parallel histories. Can we often talking about the visual art history in Indonesia, but there are many different visual art histories. For example, when I talk with the artists in Papua, they have their own uh, history and the way also how they create their art nowadays uh, with repeating the same images, for example, and why they do that. Um, and the perception towards not always creating the new, but just keeping the old and preserving the old by repeating it. This kind of ideas, I think it's very important. We, yeah, I learn a lot from that. So these different perceptions um, and that they exist next to each other, I think is very important. That is also what I want to talk about in my work. So the costumes often become a sort of artifact in the end, but I really like to have the, somebody wear them, especially in the opening, because this confrontation with having a real person wearing it is so much more, it has a much stronger impact than only hanging the costumes. So that's also every time I try to look for different ways how to exhibit them. Um, so not only hang the costume in the space, but sometimes I create a series of photographs with them or video or I just really only show it in the performances. So every time this is a different setting, yeah. The experience to see it, uh, to wear it, and also sometimes I create interactive works that the public can step inside. The idea of protection and that they can feel to be inside and something happens there. And the body that carries the history, the body that brings different layers, creating installations that are sort of open questions, you know, that people have to think about something instead of giving an answer. Yeah, so during the, the COVID or the, the pandemic, um, I created a series of works, which I call the, um, the horizontal dresses. So the work that I'm showing now in Los Angeles is called um, Wearing the Horizontal. So this idea that sort of forced uh, dresses to carry them horizontal is sort of impossible. And it actually relates to our different positions. We have to lay down, we have to stand. And also this idea that one day we have to lay down as our last, as our last part of our voyage, you know. So I created these dresses where you have this idea of showing the fragility of our existence. So these are the series that I, I show in Los Angeles.